morning and as we were just reading in Psalms 1 and it just um, talks about how God wants to awaken us. God wants for us to be awakened to his love, awakened to his truth. It says that you, in, in order to truly satis be satisfied in your life, in order to truly enjoy your life, you got to be awakened. Come on, you got to be awakened. Some of you are not enjoying your life. You're stressed out. You, you a Christian. You love God, but you ain't got no peace. All you got is chaos and confusion in your life. Come on. There's this song where, and I don't think IG will let me play it, but I want, I would love to play the instrumental if I can. But there's this song that just talks about how, how it says like how you're caught up, how we're caught up in his presence. And I'm looking for some intimate. I want an intimacy today. I like that. I like that. But it says how nothing else will do. How there's nothing else that can bring me the joy that God can bring me. How it's like, you know, and he would say like, I'm sorry, God, for going through the motions. I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough. See, when you are very success driven, you use success as a way to feel enough. To feel okay. And I think that some of us right now has forgotten that God is enough. That God is everything. That God is more than enough for me. You know, the Bible says like, what would profit a man for him to gain the whole world and lose his soul? That yeah, you got all this stuff and you got all the blessing and you got this and that and the third, but you've lost your peace. Come on, you lost your peace. Yeah, great, you got all this money in your bank account, but you stressed out. You got this You got this fine old specimen, but you can't even enjoy it. You done been blessed with these beautiful babies, but you can't even enjoy the time you have with them because you've gained so much stuff that the things that matter the most, you've forgotten what matters the most. And I think a lot of us, can admit that our priorities are out of alignment. And the reason why we have no peace and we're not seeing the blessing of God in our life like we want to see it is because our priorities have gotten out of alignment with God. Because it says God first, then your spouse if you marry, then your children, then other stuff. And we forget that God has an order. And see, peace is when everything is in order. And the reason why there's no peace in your life because something is out of order. Maybe you put your kids before your marriage and now your marriage is not in order. Or maybe you put in your job before God and so now all of a sudden your money's out of order. Or maybe all of a sudden you put the things that you're praying for. Because see, here's the thing is a lot of times we put what we need from God over actually having intimacy with God. We've made our prayer request that we give to God to be more vital than actually having a relationship with God. See, religion is about the rules and God is calling us into relationship. And I was reading this this morning, which was so beautiful. And it was in 2 Corinthians. And I want to say it was chapter 3. I'm, I got a different Bible today and stuff. Um, I just said my Bible somewhere, my other Bible somewhere. So I'm in this Bible. But I was reading and it says, are we waiting to commend ourselves again? Or do we not like some false teachers need written credentials or letters of recommendation to you or from you, do we? No, you yourselves are our letters of recommendations. Our credentials written in your hearts to be known, perceived and recognized and read by everybody. See, listen, God is wanting for our lives to demonstrate and display who he is. He wants to demonstrate who he is through the relationship with your children. He wants to demonstrate who he is in your marriage. He wants to demonstrate who he is in your business. But the reason why God can't demonstrate who he is is because we're trying to hold on to control. And I feel like I got some people on here that God is going to break you free from control today. 
You know, when you got your schedules and, and you got your agendas and, and you got your way of doing it. And then all of a sudden, here comes God and God is like, uh-uh, we going to shift the season because I'm about to put you in a season that's going to make you have to release what you want to do so you can embrace what I want for you. And see, some of you right now are stressed out and you frustrated, you irritated because God got you in this season where you can't be on your schedule like you was. You can't do life like you was doing it. And now all of a sudden, God got you in this season and you over here in chaos and confusion and you stressed out. Why? Because God is breaking you free from control. Because see, if that schedule was, a God, was the one God had for you, then God would have never needed to remove it in the first place. But see, God had to remove that schedule because your schedule was keeping you from being able to have intimacy with him. See, but not only was it keeping you from being able to have intimacy with him, but your schedule was keeping you from being able to enjoy the life that he came to give you. Because he came to give you life and give you life in more abundance. But God says because of what you're so clinging to, because of this control you're trying to hold on to, you can't enjoy that life no more. See, this morning I had like this whole plan. I was like, okay. We're going to drop the kids off. We're going to go home and we're going to, no, we're going to drop the kids off. Go clean church. We're going to go. I need to go and give me some more makeup stuff. And then after that, we're going to go and, and um, do, the, do this at the bank. And we're going to boom, 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 boom. Then I'm going to go to work and get straight into business, right? Then I start listening to this uh, message about how, you know, sometimes we're so ambitious that we can't enjoy what God has given us. And I thought about how, man, I've been on magazine covers and I've been able to make 50K in a month. And I've been able to, you know, like become an Amazon bestseller author. My daughter is getting to take this life changing medication. And man, I'm getting to change millions of lives and I'm doing all the things, but I can't enjoy it. And I haven't been able to enjoy it. And I remember that day when I was on that live and I was so mad. I was so frustrated. Because I was like, man, I prayed for this moment with my daughter and I can't even enjoy it because I'm trying to help everybody else. And because I'm helping everybody else, I can't enjoy the blessing God is doing in my life. You ever been in a place where you've been so eager to save everybody that you can't even enjoy what God is doing in your life? God didn't gave you this beautiful home, but because you're so busy trying to house broken people, now all of a sudden that house that used to be a beautiful, peaceful home, it's now just a house of chaos and confusion and depression. And there's no peace in your home. Why? Because you invited the wrong things in because you was trying to save somebody instead of allowing God to be their savior. Man, you were so eager to get that job because you were stressed out and worried about your finances. But now all of a sudden you got the job and every day you come home exhausted and pressed and you screaming at your kids and you going out for your man and you can't even give your husband some like you used to because you too tired. My husband and I laughing right now. Y'all know she, she, she real with y'all. I ain't got time to be food gazing for nobody. If I'm gonna spend my good old time on live, I'm gonna be real as real kids, okay? See, so you, you so caught up in your schedule. And you so caught up in that next thing that you can't even enjoy this thing. You so caught up in the next promotion that you can't even enjoy this promotion. You so caught up in the next sale, you can't even enjoy the one you just got. Man, this morning, um, I had put out there like how we're doing this giveaway. For um, y'all know we're giving away this beautiful bag for everybody who placed an order in our boutique, and we're giving away uh, one of our anointing oils. And I had a lady place an order, and I and I saw I was like, thank you, Father. But I was sitting there just realizing that this order didn't come when I was grinding. This order came when I was just gracing it. And I kind of want to talk about the grind and the grace. Because I think some of us so caught up in the grind that we're missing out on the grace of God. We're so caught up in what we do for God that we're missing out on what God wants to do for us. And here God is blessing you exceedingly and abundantly far above what you could ask, think, dream, or imagine. But you can't even see the blessing that God is doing because you so stressed out. You so worried about the next thing. 
or you didn't allow the wrong people into your life and you didn't allow things into your space and God says we gotta guard our heart because he say out of his heart flows the issues of life and you done stop guarding your heart because you trying to you so worried about this and you worried about that and so now the guard that was supposed to be on your heart has came down and so this morning as I'm over here just you know I, I, I had my whole plan and I listened to this preaching and I started realizing, I was like, man, that's so me. That's me where I've been so caught up in the next thing that I couldn't even enjoy it. I remember me, I was so caught up in hitting 200,000 followers. You wanna know what it feels like to hit 200,000 followers? It feels exactly how I felt when I hit 10,000 followers. Matter of fact, I think I actually was happier when I hit 10,000 followers than when I hit 200,000 followers. You know what it feels like to go from having, like when I had 700 and some followers to now having 77,000 followers? On, on IG feels the same I mean it's like praise God you know what it's like to go from having 5,000 followers to now having 20,000 followers on, on Facebook feels the same <laughs> because I thought that when I did it it was going to feel like oh but because I was so caught up in hitting the next thing I can enjoy that thing so I made a decision this morning I said I'm going to enjoy what God has given me so I had on these clothes that I was going to go to work in, go do some stuff in. And I went and I took those clothes off and I put on my robe and I put on my fuzzy socks that keep your toes warm. Y'all, this is why I wear these glasses because I got to constantly pull them up. And then I, I, I sat there had breakfast with my husband because the Bible says to whom I'm giving power to get wealth. You no, know, he said to the one that I've given riches and wealth, I gave you the ability to enjoy it. That I didn't just give you riches and wealth so you can grind and be exhausted and worried. Nah, I gave it to you so you can enjoy your life. And I've been over here and I allowed, and then there was a time when I was like making like bukus, you know what I mean? I said I ain't making bukus today, it was just a different level. And I remember because of Christians judging me and watching every little penny I was spending and making little slot comments in my in my uh, inbox, it was like all of a sudden I stopped enjoying my life. It was like I started feeling bad for the blessing on my life. I started feeling bad because, because listen, don't nobody count your pockets harder than a broke Christian. And I'm just gonna say it. Because if you wasn't broke, you wouldn't be counting my, my coins. But I, like, they was counting my money, like, every time I spent money. And I started getting all these inboxes about what I'm doing with my money. I had somebody, I remember back then, I had a lady say, I don't like what you did. I, um, I don't like how you spending my time, so I want you to, uh, I don't like how you spending my time, so I want you to, uh, send it back to me. And, um, what she had, I don't like how you spend your time, so I want you to send it back to me. And stuff like that. And I sat over here and I'm like. And this was after I just posted that I went shopping at uh at Home Goods to get some fall stuff. You know, and I'm over here like, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I was sitting here thinking like, and I mean no shade, probably shade, no shade. And I'm looking, I'm like, man, she must have done sent like thousands of dollars. And I went and looked, and this was like 20 bucks. And I was like, really? Like, God, this is this is what it's about. So you know what I did? I sent her her money back. Why? Because your $20 ain't worth my peace. Your $20 ain't worth. And listen, even if you sent me $15,000, I send it back to you. Why? Because it's not worth my peace. It is not worth me not being able to enjoy what God has given me. And I, and I remember spending so many years of my life feeling like I got to walk around her defeated because ever, because people feel like when you a pastor or when you have a ministry, <coughs> they feel like, and I know I got some of y'all Christians here. I love y'all though. I love you. But people feel like when you a pastor, you supposed to drive a hoopty. And when you a pastor, you supposed to live in like the trailer parks or something like your house need to be falling apart. Or when you a pastor, you supposed to dress very meek. And I got to dress like I'm broke or something. And, and I'm like, God, I don't, I don't think I'm called to be a pastor, Lord, because you know there ain't a bone in my body. That is, that is like that. I am bougie at heart. I mean, I, I've been bougie even when I was broke. 
This didn't just start, okay? I've been this way, God. And I allow so many people to try to dictate and determine. Y'all, let me know, is this talking to somebody today? Because listen, y'all know when I'm on here, I'm on here because I wanna, I, I, I got a place we going. And so I just found myself just being so consumed by what others thought about me. And everybody painting this picture that Christian's supposed to be broken. Christian's supposed to be in a box. And Christian's supposed to be this certain way. And you got to talk this way. I remember when I went to a certain church and we had to wear these long dresses, y'all. And so then, like, we had to dress this the part and look the part. And I'm like, listen, her God, like, I'm a fashionista. I, ju I just don't think this is, this is, uh-uh. And I realized that that was just a bunch of religion. That's all that was, was a bunch of religion. Because see, religion is restricted. But God didn't come for, for me to be restricted. He came for me to walk in freedom. Some of you have been walking in this restricted because you're so afraid. That if you do do any little thing, God's going to smite you. Oh, mighty smiter. And you so afraid and you over here just can't even enjoy the life that God is giving you. Because you're afraid that if you actually was to get free and live your life on, on the way that you really want to live your life. You're afraid that all of a sudden that it's going to just be bad. Because all we have been beat into us since we were younger is that God is this God who is just like mean and, and he makes you, God makes you broke. God makes you bitter. God makes you just throw people away. God is rude and judgy and God is all these things, but God is also loving and comforting. He will prosper you. He will bless you exceedingly and abundantly. God can give you riches and wealth. He can give you success. He can give you all the stuff and everything that we are running to the world for, God will give it to you, but we're running to the world because we believe in Christianity that if we're that the only way to be humble is for us to be broke busted and disgusted and that's nothing but a lie because Jesus went and broke come on he sure went and busted he sure wasn't defeated he walked in dominion. He walked in authority. He freely moved. He was able to do his assignment and fulfill his assignment. He was able to lead other people. He was able to be a blessing to those he encountered. And some of us right now, even though God sent us to this world to be a solution, we're only in this world being a problem and consumed by our own problems because we feel like that in Christianity, if we ain't got problems, that means we ain't, we ain't humble. And see, some of you right now, the reason why you're self-sabotaging your own success is because you feel like that Christians, if they're successful, that means you're prideful. That if you're a Christian with money, you're prideful. If you're a Christian and you got all the, like somebody said, well, those rich, famous people, listen, can I tell you that you can be rich and famous and not have to be snobby? You can have success and wealth and not have to be snobby. That you can have all those things and still be able to be a good person. But because somebody told you, told you that, that, that wealthy people are, are snobby and rude and they're stuck up. Listen, I have met more snobby, rude, stuck up, broke people than I have met snobby, rude, wealthy people. Because all wealth does is just bring out who you already are. All success does is just amplify who you already are. So if you already are it, that's what's going to come out of it. It says, you show and make obvious that you are a letter from Christ delivered by us, not written with ink, but by the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. See, it says that you make obvious that you are a letter delivered from us when your life is an example to who God of, of who God is. Come on. It says not that we are fit, qualified, and sufficient in ability of ourselves to form personal judgment or to claim or count anything is coming from us, but our power and ability and sufficiency are from God. See, this morning as I read that, I got so much freedom knowing that 
everything that I am and everything that I have, it comes from God. So when somebody judges my success, you're just judging God. When you judge what I have, you're just judging God. Because listen, everything that I have, it doesn't come from Takaya. It comes from the God in me. It says, it is he who has qualified us, making us to be fit and worthy and sufficient. And I think some of you today, you forgot who who's qualified you. That's all I wanted to talk about. You forgot it who qualified you. See, there's a scripture that says when they reject you, understand they're not really rejecting Latoya. They're rejecting God. Why? Because Takaya didn't send Takaya. Toya didn't send Toya. God sent me. So when, when they reject you, it's not a matter that they're rejecting you. It's a matter that they're rejecting God. Because God sent you. God put you there. So today I want to encourage you to know this. Know who sent you. Know who called you. Then when people begin to judge you and people begin to make these assumptions about you and they begin to all of a sudden start beginning to make this idea of you. See, when people start making these assumptions, what's the first thing we want to do? We want to defend. We want to explain ourselves. And see, God has not called us to need to run around always trying to explain ourselves. Why? Because your fruit will outlast every lie spoken about you. It says every tongue that rises up against you, you will show it to be in the wrong. Notice that every tongue that rises up against you, God says you are going to show it to be in the wrong. I don't have to show it to be in the wrong by needing to tell my side of the story. By needing to get back with them. No, I can show it to be in the wrong by how I continue to live my life. Because fruit don't lie. Come on, fruit don't lie. And in this walk that God has called me to, I don't got to try to commend myself. I don't got to try to validate myself. Why? Because God will do it for me. I don't got to try to put myself in rooms. Why? Because God will do it for me. I had somebody on my way. I haven't responded yet and stuff like that. But I had somebody write me and say that they want to schedule me for an interview. They want to interview me. I didn't have to beg. I didn't have to scheme. I didn't have to break my integrity or wiggle myself in that room for it to make that happen. Uh -uh. All I had to do was just walk in who God called me to be. See, some of you right now are trying to grind your way to success. And God says, my grace will take you there quicker. If you would put me first, I could get you there quicker. The reason why it's taking so long for you to get there is because you do it in your own strength. And the reason why you ain't hit that level you want to hit is because you in your own strength. The reason why it's taking so long for your money to change is because you still grinding. The reason why it's taking so long for you to get to that level is because you grinding. And God says, if you would enter into my grace, because notice what he says. He says, I can make all grace abound. So it's grace that lifts us. It's not the grind that lifts us. It's the grace that lifts us. But the grace requires a little bit of the grind. What are you talking about, Takaya? Because God ain't going to bless your laziness either. Because the Bible says faith without works is dead. Notice what he said. He said, by grace through faith. So I've given it to you, but there's a faith component to this. So that means that I show up and do what I can do, but I trust God to do what I can't do. Then when God tells me to step out, I step out and I trust that by stepping out that God is going to do what he said he'd do. So I'm going to show up and do what I can, but I'm going to trust God to do what I can't do. And that I understand that the vision never came from me. It came from God. So if God gave me the vision, that means he trusts me, number one. And then in him trusting me, he trusts me to, to, to look for ways to grow this thing. And as God begins to give me ideas on how to grow it, I start bringing them ideas back to him. And I say, God, is this what you want me to do, God? Is this what you're calling me to do? God, I know everybody around me says to do it this way, but God, how are you saying to do it? So I'm continually in communication with my business partner. 
See, what if the reason why your business ain't being blessed is because you ain't invited your business partner in? Because you say God is your business partner. Because you, but you choose. I heard that, Lord. God says, many of my children treat me like a silent partner. They want my blessing, but they don't want my advice. Ooh. You want the blessing, you want the money, but you don't want his advice. Come on, y'all. This word is good. I'm, I'm literally about to be done already. You want the blessing, but you don't want his advice. See, he told you to do it this way, but you still doing it a different way. He told you to go to the right, but you still going to the left. Why? Because you feel like because you're going, you should be blessed for it. But God says, uh-uh, I don't want your sacrifices. I want your obedience. You want God to bless your sacrifice. But can I tell you that a sacrifice is what God saw promoted. And obedience is what God David promoted. Sacrifice, God saw demoted. Obedience, God David promoted. See, you want to make sacrifices and you think that because your sacrifice that can replace the obedience that God is calling you into. But God wants me to come and warn you today because this is a warning to somebody. That if you don't make God a priority, it doesn't get better. If you keep putting this off, Thinking it's going to get better. It's not. Why? Because the more and more and more you put it off, the further and further away you get from God until all of a sudden now you can't even hear his voice. It's a slow fade. Come on, it's a slow fade. And see, the reason why Saul was disobedient was one, because of pride. Two, because he allowed people pleasing. And three, because he, because he thought... He looked at the stuff and he was in such a hurry to get the stuff that he was willing to break his integrity to get it. What is the reason why God can't bring you that man or can't bring you the wealth or can't bring you what you're praying for is because you're in such a rush to get it that you're willing to compromise in your relationship with God to get it. Because if it's God, you ain't got to lie and scheme your way into it. Come on, when God is in it, I don't got to lie and scheme my way into it. All I got to do is just trust him and trust his timing. The Bible says wealth gain and haste will, do it, will go away quickly. Some of you are so hasty for this wealth and success that you're praying for. And that's why it doesn't last because the Bible says little, when you get it little by little by little, it will sustain itself. But when you get it in a rush, it'll go away as quickly as you got it. You're rushing to this area. And you think that that's where you're going to feel fulfilled at. But can I tell you, you can have success. You can have wealth. Hey, Jessica, I just saw you. You can have all these things. But can I tell you something? That even in getting all these things, if you ain't got God, you will not be able to enjoy it. I've had so much success in my life, but even in it all, because I was toiling and I was so caught up in the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, I couldn't enjoy what God gave me. And the Bible says that we have got to be faithful in the little if we're going to be trusted in much. We're praying, God, give me more, give me more, give me more. What are you even doing with what he's giving you right now? Man, listen. You want more ideas? What are you doing with the ideas he's giving you now? Stop worried about the next idea and market the one he gave you right now. God had to gather me even in my own business. He was like, Takaya, the reason why this is growing is because you water it. And the reason why that thing isn't growing because you don't water it. So you know what I got? you got to do? You need to start posting this stuff. Y'all, look, I got one of my blouses from my boutique today. Tell me I ain't looking so cute in one of my blouses. Only $27.99. I only got two left to in stock, y'all, because I know y'all want to go get the Jewish. But I was over here not not fo not doing what God, not not displaying all that God put in my hand. And I'm over here looking at the next thing. And God is saying, what are you even doing with this? 
And I want to ask you that question. What are you even doing with what you got right now? You looking at all this and you looking at all that, but what are you doing with what God gave you now? Because listen, you want God to give you another idea. What about the ideas he's already given you? You want God to give you another design for your tumblers. What about the tumblers you got at your house right now that you still ain't sold? God's like, tend to what I've given you right now. Because see, what? because listen, because God is like, if you will do with what I gave you right now, those will fund the next idea. Oh, that's a word right there. That's going to fund your next idea. So today, I want y'all to really reflect and really ask yourself, have you been grinding or gracing it? Are you trying to toil for the blessing or are you just, are you receiving the blessing? Are you over here toiling for what God is giving you? Are you trying to toil for his love? Or are you just going to realize that he already loved you? And on a practical stand, but I want to tell y'all like testimonial for me, like how this works today, like in my boutique, right? I had made content. I, ain't, I, I decided that, you know what, instead of working, I'm going to get dressed. Now, I'm going to sit here. Thank you. Somebody just placed an order in my boutique. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to have breakfast with my man. I'm going to enjoy my morning, put on my cozy socks, look out this beautiful window of this beautiful house that God is blessing me with, and I'm going to enjoy these raindrops in this warm house of my Christmas decor, right? And then I'm going to get dressed. I'm going to take me a bath and I'm going to take my precious time because when you are a queen, queens ain't in a rush. Kings ain't in a rush. So I said, I'm not rushing because I know who I am. And I sat there. Then I did my, I said, I'm going to do my makeup and I'm going to go pick up my necklace that came in and I'm going to enjoy. I'm going to go and have lunch with my babies this morning. So you know what I did? I did that. And I went and I ate lunch with Addie. I went to go see Millie. I ate lunch with my Bubba. And as I did all that, you know what was happening? I'm over here getting pings on my phone. This order, this order, this order, this order. I had already made it, made a good amount of money before I ever did any content, did any work or anything. Because I chose to enjoy what God has blessed me with. I chose to not be such in a rush to get to the next thing. And instead, you know what, God? I'm about to grace this thing. So what time do I go to work, go into my building? At? I go in my building at 12 o'clock. But up until 12 o'clock, I'm going to enjoy my morning. I'm going to enjoy what you bless me with, God. I didn't have to work for those sales. One of the persons paid, like, I think spent like $140, something like that. I didn't have to grind for that $140 that she spent. No, I literally just get to grace it. I get to just enjoy it. Why? Because I chose to allow God to allow me to go into a, to enter into rest. I chose to enter into rest. And that's some of you right now. It talks about how the Israelites, how they could not be able to enjoy the blessing. They couldn't experience the blessing because they couldn't enter into rest. Seizing from the worry. They were so worried that they never could enjoy the rest that God gave them. They were so worried about how we going to defeat this person, how our bill, how we going to eat, how we going to get food, how we going to get that. And so because they were so worried, they could never enter into the rest of God. Do you understand that God has given us rest as a gift? Because if on the seventh day he rested, why are we resting? Even God rested. And I was like, man, I got to rest more. And when I go on vacation in December, y'all listen, December 26th to I think maybe into the new year, we taking our kids on a surprise vacation. I think we're going to go on a ski trip or something. But do you know what I go on this break? What I'm going to do is I'm not getting on social media. I'm going to trust that God got y'all. I'm going to enjoy my vacation and I'm going to have a good old honky dory time. Why? Because God done blessed me financially to do it. God done blessed me with my children to be able to enjoy. God done blessed me with my sexy Mexican husband to be able to enjoy him. God didn't give me all this so that way I could be sitting over here worried about it. Uh-uh. He didn't give me over 300 and some thousand followers so I could worry about y'all. He gave me 300 and some thousand followers so that way I can pour into y'all and then I keep pushing. Why? Because what you do or do not do with the word, that ain't got nothing to do with me. That's what you and God, baby. 
I want to be able, I got to, listen, it's time to enjoy our lives. We got to enter into the rest of God. She said, I just love you. When you talk, I love it. Girl, I love you too, boo boo. Lord, your sex. So today, enter into God's rest. Stop trying to figure it out. Stop worried about it. Worry, listen, he said worry ain't gonna add nothing to your life, baby. It's just taking time away from you. That's unnecessary energy. You understand how much energy you need to be an influencer. Some of y'all praying to God to be an influencer to be successful and wealthy. You know how much energy you need to be a mom, a wife, uh, run a full-time business, run a be a full-time ministry, and be all this greatness that God done put into this house. <laughs> Takes a lot, okay? And if you don't learn how to conserve your energy, and if you don't learn how to guard your heart, you ain't going to be able to do what God called you to do without being exhausted. If you don't learn how to guard your energy and your heart, you are not going to be able to do what God called you to do. Okay, let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for everybody here today. I thank you for this word today, Father God. I thank you, Jesus, that you are going to encourage them. You are going to bless them. You are going to do exceedingly and abundantly far above what they could ask and dream or even imagine. God, I pray today that you would let them know, God, that you are working all things together for their good. That you never leave them. You never forsake them, Father God. I thank you, God, that your hands are upon their life, God. That you are you are their strength. That you are their El Shaddai. You are are more than enough for us father god and that god that even in the midst of the worry and the fear and anxiety god that you are our calm in the midst of the storm somebody needs to know that god is their calm in the storm so father today we choose to rest in you we choose to have peace i choose peace today i got every reason to be in pieces but i'm choosing peace you may have every reason to be in pieces, but you can still choose peace today because it's a, it's a choice. I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying it's a choice. And I want to read this card over you because this has just literally been just highlighted over to me. I want to decree this over you, that you always have more than enough to meet your needs and to still help others. You always have more than enough to meet your needs and still be able to help others. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse eight, one of my favorite scriptures is that my God is able to make all grace abound towards me that I will always be sufficient in all things and I will have abundance for every good work. I have an abundance for every good work that God has called me to. If there's not a work that God has called me to that I don't have more than enough to be able to complete. Come on, I want you to decree that there's not a work that God will call you to that you will not always have more than enough to be able to complete it. Amen. Amen. Y'all, we're going to um, do offering time. If you would like to give, you can always give. Um, you can give uh, by cash out. We have cash out, which is dollar sign Takaya A. Uh, moderators, if y'all can put it in the chat today. Um, you can also go to www.thesisuni.co and you can click on um, the giving section and you can go and give by there. Um, you can give by PayPal. As y'all know, um, we have a ministry, which is Takaya Revelo Ministries and stuff. So you can always give so into the ministry partner on what God is doing here. God is doing amazing things in this ministry. We are reaching millions of people. We are changing so many lives every single day. And we're getting to just lead people to Jesus, encourage people, bring hope to the nations because we reach nations. And we're getting to do this by way of online, via online. And I thank God for what he has allowed me to do and all the people and the souls he's allowed us to be able to reach. So if you would like to give and you want to partner with us, um, you can also become a monthly partner with us as well and stuff. And so um, the cash app is dollar sign Takaya A. Um, our chime is the same. And I can put the giving info on the screen as well to make it easier for y'all. And I always say, if you feel led to, you go to God. You know, giving is a very intentional thing. I'm big on intentionality and in giving. The Bible says you are the purpose in your heart, what you give. That when we give, we're not just throwing something to the wind. No, we purpose in our heart. And when you give, 
You can't be worried about your, your seed after you give. Why? Because the Bible says that the seed must die. So if you worried about it, it ain't died yet. That's why some of you ain't seen your harvest because you still work. I could have done that with this money. I could have done that with that money. What you're doing is, is you're causing your seed to not be able to take root. And when you do that, you keep yourself from being able to see the harvest. I just want to tell y'all that. Amen. Hold on, y'all. I got a new giving in info and I'm trying to find it right now. Come on. That's why I say don't give grudgingly or sparingly. I know you just sent me my new giving information. Where is it at? Toya, I'm, I, I can't find it. I know you sent it to me. I remember. I remember seeing it. Maybe you sent it to me in a different message. Let me see. Oh, I found it. I found it, Toya. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. We thank you, Jesus, that you are so good, that you are so amazing. And we just thank you, God, for everybody who gives, everybody who sows, Lord, everybody who partners in the ministry, God, who partners in the amazing things that you're doing here, because you're doing so many amazing things here. Amen. This is our new giving information. We did away with our PayPal. And so these are the ways that you can give if you would like to give today, if you would like to partner with our ministry and what God is doing here. And y'all, we have a big conference coming up called Sis, You Are Made For More. We have a big conference coming up called Sis, You Are Made For More. It's going to be in Dallas, Texas. So you can go ahead and get your tickets. So feel free to get your tickets for this conference. Feel free to go and check it out. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a two-day event where we just pour into women and just encourage you to know that God made you for more. That God has made you to do great and mighty things in his wonderful, marvelous, mighty, and powerful name. And so we want y'all to come out to this event. We're going to have vendors there as well. We're going to have different things in there for y'all to be able to enjoy. And y'all, um, we do have a giveaway going, which I will talk about. So if y'all would like to be in our giveaway, um, stay tuned because I'm going to be talking about that at the end of the live. We're going to transition right on over to business stuff right after that, y'all. You gotta love it when I have The women's conference is April 5th and 6th. Oh, uh, what's, oh yeah, okay. Somebody asked about our website. Okay. Yes, um, for those wanting to come to the conference, just go to our website, which is www.thesisuni.co. And what I hear in the spirit is wealth transfer. God is about to do a wealth transfer. Listen, I want to read this. It says in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22, the wealth of the sinner finds its way eventually into the hands of the righteous for whom it was laid up for. Another scripture says the wicked go to bed rich, but wake up to find that all their wealth is gone. Another one says evil people may have piles of money and may store away mounds of clothing but the righteous will wear that clothing and the innocent will divide that money ecclesiastes 2 26 says if a sinner becomes wealthy god takes the wealth away and give it to those who please him oh that's so good god is gonna give it to you it says in Proverbs 28, 8, income from charging high interest rates will end up in the pocket of someone who is kind to the poor. Psalms 105, 37, he brought Israel forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. God didn't bring them out empty. He brought them out full. 
You ever notice that every time God would do, every time God delivered somebody, he would deliver them and bring them out whole. He would deliver you and bring you out full. See, I want to decree and declare that, that just as God brought Israel out and he brought them out with silver and gold and he brought them out to where there was not one. And the word feeble means that there was not one pauper among them. Pauper means an extremely poor person, a person without means of support or a destitute person who depends on aid from public welfare funds or charity. Wow. I decree and declare today that God is bringing us out and there will not be one feeble person among us. There will not be one person among us who is lacking, that everybody here is living in the overflow, that everybody here is walking in the fullness of God's blessing and that God is going to give you rain in due season and that your land shall yield its increase and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit, that God is going to make you to be both a symbol and a source of the blessing. The Bible says when Isaac planted his crops in that year, this was in the middle of a famine. It says he harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted. I decree and declare that you will harvest a hundred times more than what you planted today. Father, we thank you, God, that you blessed him. And just as you blessed him, you're going to bless them also. You said he became very rich and his wealth continued to grow. I decree and declare that, God, they shall become very rich and their wealth shall continue to grow. God, we are believing for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales, and commissions, settlements, estates, and inheritances, and, and interest and income. God, I thank you, Father God, that you are doing great and mighty things in our life. God, we expect more out of heaven than ever before. God, your word says that you are unable to abandon a cheerful giver. So as we cheerfully give today, we thank you, God, that you are not turning away from us, God, but that your eyes are looking towards us today, Father God. Father, I thank you today today, God, that you are opening up doors that no man can shut, Father God. I thank you today, God, that your word says you're able to make all grace abound to us, that you are able to make every earthly and spiritual blessing come to us in abundance so that we may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be, self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid. God, I decree and declare over them today, God, that they will have more than enough, God. That God, that they always have more than enough to meet their needs and to help others. God, that we have the generous nature of God, because God, you said that if anyone lacks wisdom, that we should ask of you, God, because you give to all generously and ungrudgingly. So God, I thank you that just as you give to us generously and ungrudgingly today, we give to you, God, generously and ungrudgingly. God, I thank you that your word says that you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And God, I thank you that we are able to provide very well for our family and the future generations because you said a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. So we choose today, God, to leave that inheritance for our children's children. God, we are successful and prosperous because your word says that we shall be like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its seasons and its leaves does not wither. And in whatever we do, we shall prosper. I decree and declare by faith today, God, that in whatever they do, God, they shall prosper, Father God. And God, today we choose to release the world's plan and our plan for us. And we embrace your plan because your word says in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21, that many plans are in a person's heart, but the advice of the Lord will stand. God, I pray today that your advice may stand in our lives above everything else. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and declare these things. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. God is so good.